Meet modern computing. It's smart right now. Really smart. I mean, these are highly intellectual activities previously thought beyond the capabilities of a mere machine. Yet already, it has surpassed humans in these activities and more. It's a serious threat to our economy, and that makes sense. It can work all 24 hours a day at peak productivity, doesn't get sick, tired, distracted, take vacations or breaks, and only runs at the cost of electricity. Why would an employer not choose it? I mean, if you think about it, us humans are terribly optimized for modern working environment. Automation is coming, and it is something we should all be wary of. It is a threat to an entire generation of students like me, who may spend years specializing for a market that no longer exists. But what if I told you that that automation, while scary, isn't the thing we should be most worried about? What if I told you that computers already exist, that are developing a genuine comprehension and understanding of the world around it? Programs so complex and general purpose that they transcend the labels of a program, sophisticated beyond the comprehension levels of the very engineers that designed it. I'm talking about artificial intelligence. Genuine intelligence on the cusp of consciousness. Now, the label AI is in itself not new. It has been consistently overblown and overhyped. But old AI was limited in what it could do. For example, old AI could be the best Pong player in the world, but only within the specific rule set it was trained in. Move a paddle two pixels to the right or increase the brightness of a screen by just 2%, it becomes a disaster. If we were to graph this, this would be old AI. It's good, even better than humans at some things. But notice how narrow its band of expertise is. And to understand why, we must first understand old machine learning, known as deep learning. Old machine learning and old AI is essentially a really, really complex input and output function. An input is entered, and a result comes out. The result is incredibly optimized, and the function is incredibly sophisticated. But in the end, there's no understanding or comprehension actually going on. What it's essentially doing is just detecting patterns in the mass swaths of data it's given. For those of you who have taken a stat class, put simply, statistical regression. This is why old AI can be given a picture of a chicken and just by changing a couple of pixels, tricked into thinking it's an ostrich. Now, you may be thinking that, well, this is a feathery bird, but what about a dog or even a car? Us intelligent people, our subconsciousness is constantly searching for identifying features. And even when most of a car's defining characteristics are taken out, we are still looking for and can find that this is a car. And this is what new AI is also able to do. Take, for example, Siri, a vastly complex software. Yet, when you interact with it, it's obvious that there's no genuine understanding of what's going on. But imagine Siri powered by the new AI. Siri that is actually intelligent, where you can go to it to solve your emotional problems, help you make major decisions, and be as flexible and adaptable as an actual human assistant. Imagine asking Siri not what the weather is tomorrow, but rather 
what university is the best fit for me, and have it give you an answer that is better than any of us could ever give. Just a month ago, I listened to Dilip George, one of the pioneers of this new type of AI, talk about it, defining characteristics being low amounts of training data needed and the ability to translate what it learned laterally. This type of AI is developing genuine intelligence. Dilip defined intelligence as um, having a model of a world around you and being able to act upon that. And as a neuroscientist modeled AI around the brain, this AI knows and understands cause and effect, which means it will eventually be able to make logical deductions and critically think. It is all only in a developmental stage, but it has already done something remarkable. It's cracked CAPTCHA codes, the security model that websites have been using against bots for all these years. This means a lot more than you think. First, CAPTCHA codes were designed with all our understanding of what machines were capable of to be something only a human can do. And it was a clever system for old AI. It took image recognition, something AI already had trouble doing, and distorted it almost randomly to prevent pattern recognition. But yet, new AI can, has already cracked it. It means that the security model that thousands and hundreds of websites are still using is no longer safe. It means that we were collectively wrong about how fast AI can adapt and change, and when these changes can completely disrupt our economy, we needed to start doing something about it. Take doctors, a profession that takes decades of education and a lot of critical thinking. IBM's Watson can already outdiagnose professionally and medically trained doctors, but currently, He's just another tool at the doctor's disposal. When Watson develops genuine intelligence, then he'd be able to extrapolate from data from all over the world, from all of his patients, and be able to detect influxes in diseases and flus. But most importantly, he'd be able to make the final decision of what treatment is best for you. Would you still go to your local public health care inconsistent human doctor if you could use a top-of-the-line, world-class Watson? And for those of you without health care, <clears throat> the US, what, at likely fractions of a price? I'm sorry, my dear teachers in the crowd, but you're also not as special as you may think. Imagine an AI that can tailor every individual lesson, explain every concept, and present information specifically and perfectly catered to each individual as a student. That could soon be your competition. Now, life's not all bleak. First of all, these developments will undoubtedly take time. And maybe enough time for most of you to slip by. But the rate of technology progressing is becoming faster and faster and has astounded us again and again. No one can predict the rate of AI advancing. So what does this mean for us? And what can we do about it? First, we need to recognize that we cannot stop technological progress. Put simply, even if one nation bans it, another nation would continue the research and profit off of it. Second, there doesn't seem to be any solutions for humans to outcompete AI either. However, it is important to note that when and if the mass replacement of jobs happens, the economy isn't just going to break down. It's likely to become more efficient and productive than ever before. The problem is the social inequality and the ramifications of mass unemployment, and that changes the issue. First step is awareness. Engage in discourse both offline and online, and the more people think are actively thinking about it, the more likely a solution will be created. Second, 
From that awareness comes public pressure on the governments. Let your governments know that this is an issue your citizens are concerned about and force them into committing research and legislation. There are social policies such as universal basic income that are potential solutions, but these policies take years to implement and have to be implemented iteratively. This means that governments need to take actions years before AI hits the market. Third, regardless of what actually happens, one thing is for sure. The market will shift and the, and the role technology plays will be more prevalent and integrated than ever before. This means that the most attractive workers are those who can be adaptable and flexible. But it also means that technology is no longer just for the youth. Not knowing how to use the next iPad is less funny to your kids if it means that you are incompetent in a modern environment. Learning how technology advances, how applications are designed, and how the algorithms that dictate our lives are beyond important but imperative. Automation powered by still constantly evolving AI is coming. But that doesn't mean that we can't prepare ourselves for it. Thank you.